destroyer mode. Where does the switch come from? The overdrive, the berserker mode, the full on destroyer that will not stop. I think this is something that is learned and it is a hard lesson and not everyone gets it. And it is an important lesson, a critical one. It is the thing that allows you to go the extra distance. Where you're going, you're going to need to take with you the greatest attribute that has ever been given to you by God, your confidence. You see, your confidence is your ability to trust yourself. That, that same steadfast belief that I am enough as I am. Not because of what I purchased, not because of what I've been given, because confidence that is built on items will be lost if the items are lost. Yo, we all are great. We all should think that we're great. There's no reason for you to not think that you're great. If you don't think you're great, ask yourself why. Why don't you think the highest of yourself? Listen to me very closely. Y'all running from obstacles when in fact it's the obstacle that's going to take you to the next level. Like y'all running from pain. Y'all running from challenges. You telling me how difficult your life is. Do you understand it is the difficulty that's going to prepare you and take you to that next level? To dig a little deeper. To push a little harder. Get after it. You complain about your job. You complain about where you are financially. You complain about your relationship. You complain about your opportunities. You complaining, complaining, complaining. Listen to me. You murmuring and complaining. You complaining and complaining and complaining. Shut up! Stop complaining and do me a favor. If you want to make a difference, all you got to do is one thing. This is how you get started. You want something different? Listen to me. All you got to do is make a decision. That's it. It takes both emotion and logic to reach your maximum potential, to really give everything you have to go beyond your limits. Because emotion and logic will both reach their limitations. And when one fails, you need to rely on the other. When it just doesn't make any logical sense to go on, that's when you use your emotion, your anger, your frustration, your fear to push further, to push you to say one thing, I don't stop. Success is being able to go beyond your ability and see it as a vehicle. Your ability puts you in a room. When, when you got in the room, you can use the rest of your talents, the rest of your skill set, the more than just your physical things that, that make you you. Your confidence is bust, be based on something that is deep to the soul, to the core. And the only thing that resonates that deep is confidence. It is, I believe in me because God believed in me. You never know which one is going to turn it all on. Even the bad experience. Sometimes from the bitterest experience comes the greatest awakening. So let down the barriers, take down the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness. Let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. When your feelings are screaming that you have had enough, when you think you are going to break emotionally, override that emotion with concrete logic and willpower that says one thing. I don't stop. Fight weak emotions with the power of logic. Fight the weakness of logic with the power of emotion. And in the balance of those two, you will find the strength and the tenacity and the guts to say to yourself, I
I don't stop. You get hungry by finding something that's you. I believe that all of us are born unique, but most of us die copies. You gotta find out what is it that turns you on, what resonates with you. I speak to change lives because somebody spoke and changed my life. So this is my passion. This is my drive. This is something that I feel in my heart. And, and so the key to that hunger-driven life is a heart-centered life. Our confidence must be based on the fact that we put in the work. When it's 1 a.m. and everyone else is going to bed, you're still working on developing the game plan to win in life. When it's 1 a.m. and you're in the gym and you're going for five more reps and you're fixing the flaws that are there, you're breaking through the barrier and adding to your cardio. When you work on the things that make you weak and strengthen yourself, it allows you to walk into the setting settings there you failed before, knowing that this is a different day. Whatever it is that beat me before, must be this version. And this version knows what it faced before, and I will not lose. Don't just talk. Don't just think. Don't just dream. The only thing that matters is that you actually do. So, do. Life is a mirror that reflects your thoughts back to you. It shows you exactly what you thought in life, what you were thinking about, what's been going through your head. Look back over the last couple of years of your life and you can see exactly what you thought. Did you play it safe? Did you have a business idea or concept that you could have given birth to? In fact, you're the only one that could do it. You're the only one that can do it. But you have to be willing to let go of the safety net. Because at some point you're going to have to be the high wire act of your own life. Something that you have to step out on faith and believe that the steps that I have taken, the steps that I am on, are a solid foundation built on a faith that cannot be moved, that is not shakable, that is not deniable. Everything about you has to be focused on chasing down every ounce of greatness that you have in you and wringing it out until you're absolutely empty of every self-doubt and everything that have pulled you back or held you back from becoming your absolutely best. The lessons always come before the blessings. And so when it's time to learn the lessons, meaning when you go through something, you're going to learn some lessons, but it's not always easy to extract lessons from a bad situation. These are not tears of sorrow. These are tears of joy because the thing I understand, the only thing I need you to do is deal with it in the right way. And watch what God not only does in your life, watch what God does in everybody's life that's connected to you. And the thing about every storm, every storm has an expiration date. The only thing you do for success, there's no discount. It's sweat, it's blood, it's tears. There is no discount. You can't get 50% off. It's sweat, it's blood, it's tears. There are no shortcuts to success. Stop thinking they are. And stop wanting people to put you somewhere that you didn't earn. If you can never imagine yourself successful, then you can never become that way. single day, the adversity, the opposition that life sent to break me, I wear it as a badge of honor because I understand every day of my life, I represent something. 
It's just like every individual in this room. When people see you, they think something. Life is essentially suffering, and I believe that to be a fundamental truth, but, but perhaps not the most fundamental truth, because I think the most fundamental truth is that despite the fact that life is suffering, people can transcend that. And partly the way they transcend that is by pursuing things of value. And so that if there is no value proposition at hand, then you have no meaning to justify the difficult conditions of your life. You know, Nietzsche said, um, he who has a why can bear any how. People who have no purpose in their life are embittered by the difficulties of their life. And they become first bitter and then resentful and then revengeful and then cruel. And there's plenty of places to go past cruel. That's just where you start if you're really on a downhill path. Those days when I'm tired or worn out or just sick of the grind, what do I do on those days? I go anyway. I get it done. Even if I'm just going through the motions, I go through the motions. Don't really want to work out? I work out. Don't really want to hammer on a project? I hammer on a project. Don't really want to get up and get out of bed? I get up and get out of bed. Don't take today off. Wait until tomorrow. Don't give in to the immediate gratification that is whispering in your ear. Shut that down. Do not listen. You have to keep your mind fixed on what you want in life, not on the things that you don't want. Stop thinking about, I don't want a bad relationship. Think about, I want a great relationship. I don't want to be on a bad team. Then be the captain of a team that can overcome something. You gotta be able to look at your enemies and look at them and remember that they're not your focus, they are footstool. Step on those negative comments, step on those negative people, step on all of them and use them as a footstool to get to another level. And by going through the motions, you overcame that weakness. You stayed on the righteous path, the disciplined path. You stayed on the war path. Right? No, you belong. Can you be committed to the process of what you do without being emotionally attached to the result of what you do? Because a lot of people can be committed to the process of what they do if the results don't change. But the moment the result or the outcome changes of what they're chasing, they shut it down or they quit simply because the result changed. So can we be committed to the process of what we do, but not emotionally to the result of what we do, understanding every day I get up and give everything I got to everything I'm a part of simply because this is who I am. Like the only thing I need every day of my life is 86,400 seconds. That's it. Like I don't need Hey, you go hard, you'll get this. Like I don't need some reward. Like I don't, I don't need, the only thing I need is breath in my body and I'm gonna flat out go and get it. Chances are you will realize that the desire to rest was just weakness. It was the desire to take the path of least resistance, the downhill path, the downward path. There is something great in you, but no one is ready for a thing until they believe they can acquire it. If you really want it, you got to believe. You have to have faith because you cannot do great things if you always do things in a small way. You want something great, you have to put something great on the line. The tragedy of life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy of life lies in having no goal to reach. It isn't a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. 
It is not a disgrace not to reach the stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach for. There's no fucking excuses here. And every fucking excuse that you tell yourself, every lie that you tell yourself, every fucking little story you tell yourself about not being able to do what it is you want to do because of whatever the fuck it is, that's just you, that's just you telling yourself another thing that will keep you where you are for a longer period of time. And where you are is somewhere that you don't want to be. Fear of failure. Fear of failure can keep you from taking risk. It can leave you sitting there paralyzed into not taking action. But I don't want you to overcome fear of failure. I want you to be afraid of failure. Fear of failure is good. Fear of failure will keep you up at night planning, rehearsing. But in order to become that somebody, you've got to discover what is it that my body loves doing? What is it that my mind can't take off of it? What is it that keeps me up at night? What is it that stirs me up when I see it? What gets me emotionally involved, engaged, and connected? Fear of failure will keep you training hard. Fear of failure will stop you from cutting corners. Fear of failure will keep you working, thinking, striving, and relentlessly trying to be more prepared for battle. So I want you to be afraid of failing. Because you found your calling. And calling is the exact word you want to use because your passion and your purpose have been calling you before you were born. If you wake up in the morning, you start having negative thoughts. Man, this ain't my day. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And I just don't feel myself. In the middle of the day, if you feel yourself doing that, just stop for a second and start going over in your mind everything you have to be grateful for. Everything you already have. Because what you have is substantial. You just haven't gone over the list and taken inventory in a long time. There is no secret, there is no quick fix, there is no hack, there is no path of least resistance. The quickest way for you to go from where the f you are to where you wanna be is that sh you're trying to avoid doing. But I'll tell you right now, you might not be in control of what the world gives you, but you're always in control of what you accept. This life is not an external battle, my people. This life is an internal war. Your greatest battle is here. So my question I want to ask you right now is, what are the things that are in your control that you can change right now? You can control and change the internal dialogue that you're having within yourself. I want you to be horrified, terrified of sitting on the sidelines and doing nothing. That is what I want you to be afraid of. Waking up in six days or six weeks or six years or 60 years and being no closer to your goal. You've made no progress. That is the horror. That is the nightmare. That is what you really need to be afraid of, being stagnant. So, get up and go. Take the risk, take the gamble, take the first step, take action. And don't let another day slip by.
The very thing that you're pursuing in your life is very simple. It is fulfillment. That's it. Now, I sum up fulfillment very simply. How do you feel about yourself when you're by yourself? Do you feel good? Do you feel like you're making the most of your life? Are you tapping into what the Greeks called techni? So you really have to work hard for a set of skills that matter to you. Now the skills have to matter. That's a key part of the equation. Once the skills matter to you, and they allow you to serve not only yourself, but other people, and then you actually go and serve those people. But I wanna make sure that everybody understands, the game that you're playing is a game of neurochemistry. A fool never learns. A smart man learns from his mistakes. A wise man learns from the mistakes of others. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Before you even know what you're supposed to do, your steps are already lined up. But you gotta get in luck. You gotta go after it. You gotta want it. It will not just show up. It's gotta be something that you pursue and that it means the world to you. It's gotta be something that if, if it were for free, I would still do it. But because when you go after the thing that you're called to do, your calling will take care of you. Money and things that you were worried about, you don't have to concern yourself with that. It will make a way, but only when you make that way towards your passion. Each of us must turn inward and destroy in himself all that he thinks he ought to destroy in others. Each of us must turn inward and destroy in himself all that he thinks he ought to destroy in others. See, we want to grow, but we want to stay liked by everybody. I was willing to be my own rescue at the risk of your approval. Most of us aren't like that, but we want to be liked. Well, I woke up and I like myself today, so your like is extra. My, my job is to like me first. And you're chasing a dream, when you're sacrificing, when you're going for things, and how do you get to a space and place? It says not failure, but low aim is sin, right? It's all right to fail and seek of those dream goals and aspirations, but when you be careful that you're reaching for the stars that everybody you love don't get burned up by the heat, that's a totally different animal, mm -hmm. right? When you're reaching for it, how can we look at it, self-assess, and look at it in such a way to where, all right, I got my goals, my dreams, and my aspirations, but what is this going to affect? When I wake up in the morning, I don't think, am I motivated to go do what I'm supposed to do? No, I don't think about it for one millisecond. When the alarm clock goes off, I have no thought about whether this is easy, whether this is hard, whether I wanna do it, whether I don't wanna do it, none of that matters. It's an emotionless, thoughtless discipline. When the alarm clock goes off, you get up, you get out of bed, and you go do what you're supposed to do. I don't care how it feels. I don't care if it's easy or hard. It doesn't even matter to me. It's just a reaction, it's a discipline, and it's life. And that's the way I choose to live my life. You're gonna go to a new level, and every time you get to a new level, you're gonna face a new devil. But when they come at you, there is something different about you now. You see, all those stones that they threw at you when you were young and immature, when you were insecure and didn't know what you were about to become, those bricks that they've thrown, I need you to realize that was a foundation for you to build a platform for them to be able to see you at your next level of elevation, wherever it is that you are going. They couldn't have gotten you there any better, but by throwing those bricks at you, they gave you the material that was necessary to be more, so you can do more.
know, a lot of us, you know, we stuck. You know, we stuck in a season. We stuck in in grief. You know what I mean? We stuck in pain. We stuck in just average. You know what I mean? We just stuck in the day to day. And there's some things that we need to move on to. Let me say this. It's hard to move on when you have programmed yourself to focus on what you don't have, y'all. You need to continue to dream of your future. Praise God, continue to dream of your future, but stay in the present and work on it. Some of y'all, your problem is you dream too much. You dreaming so much, you ain't doing no work. But God told me very closely, wake up in the morning and dream of the Nobel Prize, but get up and make the bed. you're trying to accomplish there's only two ways you can be you can be the person who learns a little bit who does a little bit and then who decides that this it really isn't for them and moves on to something else and repeats that cycle over and over and over again or you could be the person who's committed you could be the person who says this is going to fucking work no matter what happens you can't read somebody else's book about some theory on how to do shit. Some guy who sat up in a nice warm office and wrote some book with a nice cup of coffee in the fucking hand. No, I want to see that guy who immersed himself in fucking hell. And he thought about quitting and leaving and his wife and his kids. And why am I here? Is it worth it? All this crazy shit. And found out a way to get through it. We have pain, we have suffering, we react. And we react about, get the fuck out of here. It's those people who are able to control that feeling of flight and say, no, nah, motherfucker, there's a way through this. It's going to end. It's going to end, but we don't know that. We don't think that. At that time, this is going to last forever. So what keeps me going? I've quit several things. I know what's on the back end if you can quit. It's a lifetime of thinking about why the f did I do that? And I ain't doing that no more. Question yourself. Question yourself every day. Ask yourself, who am I? What have I learned? What have I created? What forward progress have I made? Who have I helped? What am I doing to improve myself today to get better, faster, stronger, healthier, smarter? Is this what I want to be? This? Is this all I've got? Is this everything I can give? Is this going to be my life? Do I accept that? And realize that all of us, all of us can do better. We can be better. And it starts when you begin to ask those questions. So ask the hard questions of yourself and find the path to progress and discipline and to freedom inside the answers.